D'Angelo gets the call. He's in. Untouched for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. And D'Angelo Williams plows for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. D'Angelo into the end zone for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. His seventh of the season. And the Steelers, in this heated rivalry, draw first blood. With us now, Pro Bowl running back D'Angelo Williams, who last year ended up tying the league lead with 11 TDs. Not too shabby, stepping in nicely. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks so, for having me. First of all, congrats on the wedding. You just got married. Yes. It looks like you had a pretty good time. Please tell us about this Walking Dead theme. Well, uh, I've said all along, weddings are for women. Okay, uh, us that's men, fair. we just kind of tag along. We <laughs> yeah. say our dues. Uh, the only thing that hit us hard is in our pockets when we have to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, okay. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be different. I wanted, to, I want to have an opportunity to have fun during mm -hmm. my wedding, and that was my opportunity to have fun because I always wanted to be a walker. I'm a huge Night of the Living Dead fan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, huge um, uh, walker, and uh, I, I love horror movies. Yep. And because of that, that's why I was able to do what I was able to so do. So nothing to do with the marriage zombies coming to get you the single d'angelo williams uh be, you know being killed by the marriage zombies no symbolism there no no symbolism all right, at good. all but i mean it i guess you can say that because i mean once we do get married we're like zombies <laughs> i am not equipped to have a conversation about this i'm not oh, yes, yes, do. touching that at all yes, let's, do. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's go to football i mean we we look at the steelers right now there's a lot of expectations, but obviously you got Le'Veon Bell. He's expected to be out for the first four games. You got Martavis Bryant. He's suspended for the season. We all know why. That puts a lot of pressure on you. You carried the ball 200 times last year. Everybody thinks you can handle it. Nevertheless, people still are looking at the Steelers and thinking Super Bowl. Talk to me about that. Absolutely. I mean, you got to think, though. All 32 teams are thinking Super Bowl, but the, the reality I don't think so. is. I don't think all 32. Which one do you or think? Please, think? you want me to get started? Yeah. No, no, wait, I'm, not, I'm, not even gonna start. I'm not even going to start that. I told you. I know we press for time. I, got I know you. we press for time. That's you. everybody's goal. Right. Is to, now, whether they put the work in to be that that two teams that, that play in the Super Bowl, now that's completely different. We put that work in here to get to the Super Bowl and to win it. You know, we don't just want to get there and then falter once we get there. We want to get there and win it. There's no jab at any team because I like I know how people try to go through yeah. and they try to, you know, thread out stuff that I say. Right. But, um... I, there's always pressure on me, uh, and that's the pressure that I, that, you know, coach told me there's only two types of pressures, pressure that, that's applied and pressure that you feel, and I want to be the one that apply that pressure, and I apply it to myself all the time. Uh, I always get ready for a 16-game season, whether I play in it or not, so I'm ready to go, and then, you know, once we make that playoff push and that Super Bowl run, I'll definitely be ready. So there's no pressure on me at all. I mean, a lot of people tease me and say I'm a backup, man, but what they don't understand is it, it doesn't pay like a backup. <laughs> a backup, backup. <laughs> 32-year-old running back. 33. No, I'm saying last oh, year. 32-year-old yeah. running backs who carry the ball as much as you did don't generally perform the way you did last year. 33-year-old running backs almost not. How have you been able to preserve yourself to perform at this level at this stage in your career? It's not about preserving yourself. I had this conversation countless times. It's not that. It's just that the coaches don't give you those opportunities anymore. You look up all the 32-year-old running backs that have played at my age and see if they got the same opportunities that I got. All you have to do is have a coach that believes that you can carry the load and you'll make it happen. And I don't think any of the coaches that are 30 plus years old that had a running back to do it believed well, in that guy once he hit Here's 30. why I disagree with you. I disagree with you because I think you're selling yourself short. The no. fact that, let me explain. Okay. The fact of the matter is there ain't too many 30, there ain't too many 25 year olds that can do what you do. So you can't just sit up there and say, oh, there's a lot of 33 year olds out there that can run the football and do what I do. They just haven't been, been given the opportunity. Maybe they weren't given the opportunity because they ain't good enough. Is that possible? That's possible. And how much is the offensive line? I mean, obviously, Le'Veon Bell, I think, when he's on the field, is the best back in the game. Absolutely. You had a tremendous season last year, but you can't help but notice that even from the preseason, you're like, boy, that Pittsburgh offensive line is going to be a monster. We call them the goon squad. They've always been monsters. You know, uh, in years past, we've thrown the ball a lot. Uh, now, since Le'Veon's here, everybody's taking notice to the run game, and they forget about our offensive line. They talk about his patience, but in order for him to have that patience, you got to have an offensive line that's able to hold those blocks and sustain them for a long period of time and they do that here is there something about having a head coach too i remember tomlin's first introductory press conference when you know he's there going i'm like who's this dude steelers football 
run the ball, stop the run. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm rolling with this guy. Is yeah. there something, I imagine, especially for a running back, playing for a guy where in his heart of hearts, he likes that kind of grind it out type of game, right? Well, it's not just that, though. You also have to understand, not only do we have a great offensive line, and I'm saying great, uh, a lot of people put the Cowboys offensive line up there, and they kind of look at the Steelers offensive line and don't put us even in the top five, but we'll change that this year. Yep. Um, but you look at it from, a, I look at it from a standpoint of this, no matter how good your offensive line is and no, how, no matter how good your running back is, it all boils down to your quarterback. It all boils down to your quarterback. And, and having the quarterback that we have in Ben Roethlisberger, he takes a lot of pressure off right. us. Because if you put eight in the box or nine in the box, he will torch you and his change of play calling. Why is he? I got I to I chime in here because I got to get this in. I asked Antonio Brown the same question. You're a loquacious individual. You talk, you speak your mind, etc. I want to know what, if anything, did you say to Le'Veon? Did you say to Martavis? I want to know what kind of conversations you guys have amongst yourselves in terms of stand, staying straight and narrow and doing what we got to do to get this done and not putting yourself in these positions. Well, we've had those conversations. This, the unfortunate part about those conversations is, is that you don't think you have to have those conversations. So mm -hmm. when you have those conversations, it's too late. You know, it's it's already that they're either off the beaten path or they've already got into some trouble. And that has nothing to do with Le'Veon or uh, Martavius Bryant that I'm speaking about. I'm just talking yeah, about it in general. But the conversations that we've had, like, because I don't know what's going on, and I hadn't asked El Bill, like, hey, what's going on? And the reason why I haven't asked him is because when I sit up here and I talk, I get to talk like everybody else and generalize, like to say, hey, you know, but I don't know what's going on, though. You don't know what's going on. We know the appeal process is, is going forward. He stepped up. He said what he's had to say. Yeah. But we all put them in a box. And not when I say all, I'm not talking about myself, people outside of them, and say, hey, he can't stay off the weed. But, in fact, we don't know what actually happened. We don't know if there was a mix-up in uh, locations or where he was. Uh, it ultimately comes back to him making sure that he have his priorities straight or he have his all ducks in a and row. And that's but, why I asked you, what do you say as a team? Not even to those specific individuals, right. but just coming together and making sure you fly on the straight and narrow because we got a big we got a big goal here. What, what, what do you say to them? Real well, we, we did say this. Like, we the Pittsburgh Steelers, our offensive side and our defensive side, we're the only ones that can beat ourselves. We're the only ones that can beat ourselves. And we're not talking about in the game. We're mm -hmm. talking about off the field. Right. Because our off the field issues are obviously public. So, right. And that's what we're having to deal with. Gotcha. D'Angelo, thank you so much. We always enjoy having you. Good luck thank this you. season. And All I right. love what you said about the wedding. That's fun. Yeah. Enjoyed it. It, it was about time we had fun, right? Right. <laughs> you don't look like a zombie. You don't yeah, look like a zombie. I mean, <laughs> that's because I'm on set right now. I'm in yeah, front of yeah, yeah, yeah. But people. he can transform. Somehow, we saw. some way, I don't believe that you would have gotten married if you felt like a zombie. Exactly. Yeah, I don't well, believe that. You, know, we you always, better clean it up. You got to go home. Clean it up. I know. I know. Clean it up. Well, we all had those head down cases where you just walk in the room and you. So are we zombies? Are we not? Happy life, happy life. We all know that. Up next, D'Angelo Williams, head coach, Mike Tomlin, joining us here from Latrobe at Steelers Camp. More first take after the break with Mike Tomlin.